All right, well, welcome everybody to Building Clean, the benefits to buying local, buying healthy, energy efficient building products. Um, a huge thanks to our um, uh, sponsor, Build Equinox, um, now featuring the Serve 2, a smart ventilation system. Uh, with a standard ERV or HRV, you get constant low airflow rate with no relation to actual indoor air quality or occupancy. For the first three days when the home is occupied, the air quality is poor. The ERV just can't keep up. When the occupants leave on vacation, the ERV keeps ventilating and wasting energy. Since the CERV actually monitors air quality, it ventilates only when it needs to. Compared to an ERV, the CERV can ventilate up to 300 CFM, quickly purging pollutants from the home. When no ventilation is needed, the CERV can recirculate and unify the home, providing some additional heating or cooling and dehumidification in a very energy efficient manner. Now, the CERV does this by monitoring both CO2 and volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, um, to determine when ventilation is necessary. Now, many gases are undetectable to the human nose, yet can cause significant impairment to health, to your clients, to their cognition, and to their sleep quality. Even though your clients can't smell them, the CERV can. Monitor your indoor air quality, change your set points, and configure the CERV to best suit their home and lifestyle. Instead of an ERV exchange core, the CERV uses a high efficiency heat pump to exchange energy between incoming and outgoing air. And what does this mean? Conditioned, comfortable air unifies the home instead of dragging exterior rooms away from comfort. Uh, the CERV is manufactured right in Urbana, Illinois, in a, in a facility that's being 100% uh, powered by solar. So American energy, 100% American energy, 100% American made. CERV can work with a heat pump, such as a ream heat pump, uh, and it can boost it even further. Uh, it can work with um, a Mitsubishi ducted mini split to help move heating and cooling around a home or multifamily unit. And finally, it can work with GeoComfort Geosystems GeoBoost, uh, syncs the serve right to your geothermal system. BuildEquinox.com, learn more today. Now, this particular course is approved for one hour in continuing education units. Uh, and also AIA HSSW, uh, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Um, today I'll be your moderator. My name is Brett Little, and I'm the executive director here at the nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. Uh, the question we're going to be asking today is, is there a database to find better products? Uh, it's very difficult to find all the products you need in a healthy, energy-efficient way. It takes a lot of time, a lot of research. So is there something that can help? Um, so with that, I am uh, very excited to introduce our speaker here today, uh, Dana Parker, National Program Manager for the Blue Green Alliance Foundation. She brings 18 years of nonprofit coalition building and issue uh, advocacy experience to BGAF and has worked in a variety of capacities in the environmental, labor, and uh, manufacturing communities. She currently works as a part of uh, BJF's Building Clean project team, where she advocates for the use of healthy US-made energy efficient building products among housing stakeholders, including contractors, architects, nonprofit government housing organizations, and manufacturers of energy efficient building products. So with that, Dana, I'll hand it off to you and please take it away. Great, thank you so much, Brad, and thanks uh, to the Green Home Institute for inviting us here today to talk about Building Clean. Um, thanks everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, so just to give you, I guess, a little overview, uh, there's a lot to cover um, to give you a bit of an agenda so we can uh, hopefully keep this as focused as possible. Um, we're just going to start out with an overview of you know, who we are and, and about the Building Clean database. Um, we'll discuss some specifics on hazardous chemicals in building products and why it's important to understand um, when we're choosing certain products, what those kind of hazards are. Uh, we'll get into more detail on the hazardous chemical section of our database and how you can find certified products. And we'll be able to end with some results of our research on certain product sectors and sort of helpful hints of what we've learned uh, while doing research on thousands of different manufacturers and manufacturing locations of energy efficient products across the country. Uh, so just to give you a little more background, you know, the Blue Green Alliance, um, you know, we started actually as a project between the United Steelworkers and the Sierra Club in 2006. And just like it says here, we're focused on educating the, job, the public about job creating potential of environmental solutions. So, um, you know, we work to support labor and environmental policy and other initiatives on a national and state level. Uh, we're 
based in Minneapolis, but have a, a large presence in D.C. as well as within 10 field states where we have folks working um, on a variety of issues related to this in, in those areas. Um, and we've worked a lot to support the creation of, you know, what people call green jobs and um, the development of U.S.-based supply chains of renewable energy and advanced transportation. So um, that's some of our background. Uh, but now, you know, like I said, we're focusing and looking at building clean and what, what what can we look at in terms of job creation and the use of healthy building products um, as we go to build our homes and, and other multifamily facilities across the country. So our, you know, this really looks at, you know, what is that intersection with health in the environment? And sorry, give me one second. And really, we have some four major goals here with this initiative. Um, we really want to help grow the demand for U.S. state energy efficient building products. Um, we want to increase the awareness of harmful chemicals used in some energy efficient housing products. It's not the case in all of them, but in those that have potential hazards, well, we wanted to do that research and be able to inform people as to those hazards. Uh, we want to be able to easily identify products um, that meet customer demand, customer demand and certification requirements, so like for LEED and um, Enterprise Green, or healthy U.S. made energy efficient products, and to be able to educate folks on the significant role energy efficiency plays in the clean energy economy. Um, like I said, we had done previous work on renewable energy, advanced transportation, and we really see uh, the use of building products, energy efficient building products, and in, in helping uh, grow jobs in local communities. So if you were to go to our Building Clean database, and you can find that at www.buildingclean.org, uh, this is sort of the first section that you come to. And this looks at uh, the eight main um, product sectors that we did research on. And so far, we have 4,500 company locations that have been researched. And we started doing the background manufacturing research on all of this by looking at um, Energy Star and Water Sense certified products. So uh, we were able to, to use that as a base and then do all of the research to find out where these products are actually being made. Um, one of the sectors that was not within Energy Star or Water Sense is water filtration. Um, and we decided to do that because uh, given, you know, looking at what happened in Flint and other potential issues with uh, polluted water and old infrastructure, uh, water filtration has just become uh, such a big topic and clean water is obviously part of a healthy home. So that is another sector that we've included that was not included in our original Energy Star and Water Sense research. If you click on any of those main buttons that I just showed you, uh, the main sectors, you would open up a, a basically a, a page that you'll get to that will sort of provide you with a market overview and three main ways to search for, for products within a particular sector. So uh, this one is insulation. Um, and obviously you have three things down here that you can search. You have your CSI codes or your Construction Specifications Institute or Master Format codes that you can search by. You can further refine that by picking out what state you live in. And then on top of that, you can look at the materials. If you were to choose none of these, um, you basically have an entire list of all of the facilities we have that are around the country uh, manufacturing. It's quite surprising because insulation is something that is highly manufactured in the U.S. and often manufactured um, on a local or even regional level. Uh, so finding insulation um, that is made near you it can actually uh, is quite possible. If you uh, look just below on our website, there's also uh, the, the first main buttons that you would come to. If you look below there, there would be a zip code radius search. Um, this is obviously really helpful for folks that are looking for locality points, um, other things that might help you find something that is made as close to your project site as possible. Um, this example here um, is provided is through for Houston, Texas, and you can put your zip code in and basically find out within a 50, 100, or 200 mile radius what uh, products are being manufactured around your project site. So this gives a little example of, you know, some sealants, lighting, insulation uh, companies that are, that are around that area. And any of those uh, red buttons that you would click on would bring up all of your company information. So it would tell you what, uh, you know, obviously your, your address, um, all of the, the product information, things that are being made at that specific site. And I'll show you an example of a card that you would look at to, to get that data here in a second. 
or you have an option of searching uh, by an advanced search. So um, basically, these are all of the different ways that you can search for products in our database. So um, as you look, you can see sector, um, CSI codes again, your state. Um, and you know, one thing I want to talk a little bit more specifically about, and given our background in manufacturing, we actually have things separated out by tiers. And what this means is that uh, an OEM is an original equipment manufacturer. So that's basically someone who's manufacturing a brand name, let's say like a Whirlpool. Uh, but we've also included companies in this database that are manufacturing some of those component trees. Uh, so let's think of, um, you know, someone who's making, uh, uh, you know, products that go along with HVAC. So let's say insulation for pipes and things like that. We do have some of those manufacturers included in here as well. Um, and that would be considered a tier one. So not to get into in the weeds on that, because I think that's more of a, a sort of a sector that, that manufacturers would be interested in. Um, but it's still good to know that it's there and, and what that information stands for. Um, also, you have materials, um, certifications, and transparency. I will definitely be getting into that a little bit more down the road here um, in terms of water filtration, point of use, and technology, and then all the different ways you can search, whether the company is foreign or U.S., manufacturing sites, headquarters, things like that. This is, this is definitely a very detailed search um, should you find yourself getting into the advanced search. Um, and as I mentioned before, what we have are, you know, this is how all of the information is recorded um, for each company. So I showed you the map that had the little red dots on it. If you click on any of those, uh, you'll come up with what we call as a company card. So again, you have your company name, um, your address. This is the, the Owens Corning facility that manufactures out of Del Mar, New York. Um, what they're making, um, so different fiberglass products, they're an OEM, meaning that they're, they're a brand they're, that is selling into the marketplace, uh, the different materials, the CSI codes, the various brand names that they sell their products under. Um, this is a US-owned manufacturing site, um, website, phone, and email information. So this should give you a good idea of what kind of product is being manufactured at this facility. And on top of it, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this once I get into the chemical section, but here's all your health certifications that are associated uh, with this particular product. And any of these, uh, should you be live on the database, would you be allowed to click on any of these and, and look into further information as to what those mean? So as I mentioned, um, you know, oh, excuse me. Uh, as I mentioned, we did a lot of extensive research, not only looking at manufacturing, but tried to layer this information uh, with all of our hazardous uh, chemicals that are in potentially in these building products. So um, building clean, uh, we want to increase the awareness and urge the substitution or elimination of harmful chemicals used in energy efficient building products. Um, this is, you know, obviously the, the second major component of what we're focusing on, but you know, but, you know, why do we want to do this? Um, you know, people use the word green a lot. I mentioned green jobs earlier, um, but, you know, green is a label. It typically, typically doesn't assess the impact on health. It's only, at least in terms of building products, only looking at the energy efficiency and not the, not the health picture. Uh, but, so a green claim, should never be one that is confused with the toxicity profile of a product. That's what you know the American Chemistry Council says, and we actually agree with that. Um, this is a quick example of um, an affordable housing project that was done in Boston that we learned about. That what's interesting to note is that they did all of the energy efficient um, changes uh, within the project but did not take any healthy housing products into consideration. So as you can see, um, there are major drops sort of in everything except for chemical exposure, um, you know, energy savings, but not decreasing the amount of exposure to chemicals that people in the home are facing. So uh, this sort of just gives an example of, you know, why that's something that's still out there that needs to be addressed and why we're not looking at the total green picture um, when we're only talking about those traditional those traditional terms, we need to be considering health as a part of that green picture. 
sorry for the quality on this picture, but once uh, this is sort of an example of, you know, this is a picture of asbestos flooring, um, not a very good one, like I said, but a good example of, you know, one of the biggest problems is once the material is used in the building, it stays for a really long time. So here's an example of something we've been dealing with uh, for quite some time, moving asbestos. Um, and would we have known better? Would we have put all of the, those chemicals in, into those homes or into those facilities? Um, but they stick around for a long time and they're hard to remove. So thinking about health is something we want to do on the front end. Um, and it's not just dirt either. Or, and so stuff that's coming into your home, um, you know, we looked at the, there's a study that uh, came out of a your common household dust bunny. Um, found 45 chemicals from five different chemical classes that have been measured in uh, U.S. indoor dust in three or more data sites. So this is pretty consistent that they're finding um, phthalates, phenols, flame retardants, fragrances, fluorinated chemicals, other things um, that are, you know, making their way into the home. It isn't just dirt from the outside. These are things that are potentially within your own home and within your, your building products. And it, you know, these are chemicals that are associated often with you know, health hazards such as cancer, endocrine hormone disruption, and other reproductive toxicity. Um, another statistic looking at toxic chemicals tied to $340 billion in U.S. health costs and lost wages. So chemical exposure both from buildings, the environment, and elsewhere is harmful. Uh, to society as a whole. This isn't just, you know, an individual problem. This is causing long-term health problems that are uh, affecting, you know, work and other, you know, daily activities of those here in, here in the U.S. On top of this, 90% of our time is spent indoors, um, unfortunately, and building materials are number one usage for the top 20 chemicals by volume as reported to the EPA. So this is a pretty well-known statistic, but it means that, you know, we're spending a lot of time being potentially exposed to potentially harmful chemicals. Again, some more statistics on asthma and housing. 39.2% um, of doctor diagnosed asthma uh, among U.S. children is attributable to residential risk factors. So this is a study that was done uh, by the Healthy Building Network, which is uh, a group that we work with on the national level. I'm often partner with to get a lot of this information. Um, as an example, one in 13 Americans now have asthma, and it's a disease that has exploded through the population over the last 50 years, and it has been known to be widely linked to home risk factors. So again, another reason to be paying attention to the health of our building products. Here's some examples of building products with asthmogens. Um, and obviously, there are a lot of these are already included in our database, insulation, paints, adhesive sealants, floorings, wall coverings, carpet, wall board, composite board, and coatings and finishes. Um, so these are all things uh, that are potential triggers for asthma. And again, as I get more into the sort of hazardous buildings or hazardous chemical section of this conversation, you'll start to see um, some of the details as to why these are potential hazards to folks. So this is, um, you know, I sort of uh, went over the first couple of sections. We looked at how you could search um, by product sector, how you could search by zip code, and this is sort of how you can search by harmful chemicals. Um, so how can the building clean website help you understand the potential hazards better and find a way to avoid them? So this is, this is the purpose of this section of our database. Again, these are uh, the different categories we've included on building products with potential hazards. So we've done the research on insulation, sealant, CSL light bulbs, uh, paint, wall coverings, flooring, and windows and doors. Um, you know, we shared it with the energy efficient product sectors, but we've added wall and floor products, so this site can be a one stop shop for building product hazard education. Um, if once you get onto the site, I know we're not doing the site live here today, but um, it, you can get quite into the weeds on a lot of the details with uh, with how much we have on, on chemicals in there. So uh, the, these are the main categories that we just cover. And I'll go through one by one, um, but these are the different health related tools on the website. So we have our charts that show the hazards by products and chemical, chemical fact sheets. 
um, content listings, um, the explanation of various certifications and resources, and product searches. So I'm going to go through these one by one. So these are the different charts. So on the website, an example of one showing the different chemicals, uh, the purpose of those chemicals. Is it for fire protection? Is it a, is it a binder? Um, what are the potential top hazards with some of those chemicals? Um, so they're, do they bioaccumulate? Do they potentially cause uh, respiratory issues, cancer, um, things like that? Um, highest warning, so everything is color coded in there. Um, you know, purple, as it says, being very high concern, red high concern, orange medium concern, and it sort of goes down uh, to, you know, green being the least concern. Um, but all of that is, is visible and encoded on the website and easy to understand. And also the types of insulation that are potentially with those warnings. So uh, yeah, uh, your span and extruded polystyrene, uh, spray foams, um, things that might be in fiberglass or mineral wools or things like that. So this gives you an example of um, kind of cross-referencing that we did and putting these charts together to show you uh, what all the potential issues are with some of these products. This is an example of a chemical fact sheet. Um, so again, apologize for the size. There's a, you know, trying to take what we have on our, our database and put it in here was a bit challenging at times. Um, but we have, a, this is an example of formaldehyde. Um, so how can, you know, this affect my health? It talks about your acute and your chronic health impacts. Um, again, you have your little hazards and warning signs here explaining. And again, these are all, you can click on all of these and get more uh, sort of data on what those individual things mean. Um, what are some of their safer alternatives? And, you know, again, color coding and chemicals from, you know, the purple and red to green, uh, showing you what is uh, the most or least dangerous. Um, and, and, and toxic chemicals, you know, change depending on what kind of products you have. So you'll get a diff. So this is formaldehyde. This is something that's used, it has been used as a binder um, and insulation products. Um, there'll be different things in sealants. Uh, potentially, we have flooring and things like that, like phthalates. So you'll have different chemical fact sheets depending on what product that you're looking at and, and what chemical is in them. Uh, these are the various uh, certifications um, and explanations of different resources we have on uh, of the certifications we have on the website. So um, as I was showing you um, back in an earlier part of the presentation, I showed you a, a, an example of insulation and uh, the Owens Corning facility, and it had all of those labels on the bottom. So these are all of the different um, certifications that we include. Uh, so cradle to cradle, green guard, um, health product declaration, HPD, uh, declare, um, SCS global services, and the living product challenge. Um, these are all, you know, next to each product. If there is an HPD, you can actually click on it and be able to open it and review it. Um, and then, like I said before, any of these, uh, you know, certifications are able to be clicked on if you had a question specifically what it meant. Um, everything is, is linked and interactive through each, uh, each company card that we've created if the product has a health certification. So it should be easy to, to understand what you're looking at. Oops, excuse me. Um, so I mentioned these are the product searches, and this is sort of uh, the quantify those certifications in particular. Um, you can go to uh, the certified product search, and this is an example of insulation. As you see, we have not only insulation, but insulation, sealants, water filtration, paint wall coverings, windows, doors, and skylights, and flooring. These are all things that carry some sort of, of health certification with them. Um, again, this is insulation. You'll see uh, as each one you click on, you'll bring up a different set of search criteria. So. Uh, for insulation, and the specific certifications are those that are included on the list there. Uh, the different materials um, are brought up, as well as the different transparency labels. So um, these can be searched as a whole list, so you don't have to, you know, break it down into this, and you can just review the list as a whole, or you can go very specific and, and look if you're trying to find something that carries a specific transparency or certification. Um, 
should you want to go that direction. Um, so, you know, chemicals of concern and looking at costs and stuff, it's, it's something to consider, um, you know, when you're when you're looking at products, but, you know, we really need to raise awareness and try to balance, um, you know, health with functionality and effectiveness and cost and all of those different things when it comes to choosing products. However, um, health um, hasn't been at the top of the list and, you know, which is, you know, one of the reasons we're, we're, we're pushing forward and trying to move forward on this project because we really need to increase awareness, um, have people informed enough to be asking questions um, when they're reviewing and researching products, um, asking, you know, companies when they're talking to them to demand content, you know, transparency, and insisting that they actually make safer products. Um, so these are all, all things that, you know, we can only you know, inform people, but we need the, the builders in the community to be asking the right questions and, um, you know, helping push the industry overall. It seems that in the energy efficiency side of things, um, there has been a big push um, and, you know, but in terms of health that we've had to, you know, get more people aware, more people involved when, when looking at these products. So product consultation, what we've learned. Um, so I mentioned, you know, in the beginning, we have eight different product sectors that we did uh, research on. Um, and that doesn't include um, the, the flooring and the other non-energy efficient products that we looked at for health. Um, so, but I, I, you know, I just kind of wanted to go through and review, you know, so what are some of the things that we learned from doing this research? You know, there's some helpful hints when I think you're trying to find products for a project. Um, you know, not everything, you know, some companies are making things here in the US, um, but they don't make everything in the US. They'll make some products overseas as well. And it depends really on what that product is. Um, and, you know, if it's something that you can actually find in the US. If, you know, so I, I just kind of wanted to go through and, you know, go sector by sector and maybe give some, some helpful hints and things. Um, as to what you can, you know, pay attention to while you're searching for some of these products. Um, so in terms of um, our first sector uh, appliances, um, you know, there's no health certifications associated with appliances. Um, they're pretty easy to moderate to find in the U.S. Um, however, it really depends, again, on what you're looking for. So there's, you know, a lot of uh, large appliance manufacturing that's still here in the U.S., um, like your refrigerators, ovens, dishwashers. Um, larger products that are going to be harder to import. Um, that's not the case with all manufacturers. I mean, you still have some um, larger uh, foreign manufacturers that send finished products to the U.S., but um, you still do have a lot of major appliance manufacturing. Whirlpool being the number one here in the U.S. in terms of volume, um, they also make a lot of products um, manufactured for companies like Kenmore and things that are brands that um, you know, Sears actually doesn't do any manufacturing, so they'll manufacture multiple brands here in the U.S. Um, some companies like General Electric, GE Appliances, um, they've gotten out of the appliance business um, and have sold it to other foreign, larger foreign manufacturers, higher actually owned GE Appliances now. So um, it's something that's, you know, likely to stay here. It's, it's hard to import a lot of bigger products. So um, a lot of what you're finding is is going to be made here in the U.S. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's different with smaller appliances. You know, most of the stuff is made overseas and sent to the U.S. as finished goods. So, you know, you're looking at your, um, like, uh, uh, dehumidifiers, uh, other smaller, uh, just, you know, units, things like that, that aren't going to be heavier to ship. Um, so those are, tend, those are the things that tend to be made overseas as well and will continue to be. Flooring is a, another sector here. Uh, they do have multiple health certifications with it. These are all the different ones that are included for flooring within the Building Clean Database. Um, flooring, made in US flooring products are somewhat hard to find, not in the sense that they're not made here, um, but that they're not, each, each company sort of manufactures, you know, like I said, they'll manufacture some products here in the U.S. and then they'll manufacture other products 
um, overseas. So you really have to have some due diligence um, when reviewing your spec sheets or other things when looking at the products just to double check if it's made in a U.S. facility. Um, it does help to, to know, obviously, by using the Building Clean database, you can see uh, what companies are actually doing manufacturing. And then once you find a specific product that's made by them, just to double check um, either their website or their specification sheet uh, to, to find out if that product is a U.S. made product. Um, but again, it is, it is quite possible to find uh, flooring made here and, and a lot of healthy flooring as well, carrying the health certification. HVAC products, um, no key health certifications, um, pretty easy to find here in the U.S. as well. Um, similar to um, the appliances, uh, you know, larger things tend to be made in the U.S. Um, as well as things like ductwork, which is, again, it's, you know, some of that supply chain associated to HVAC products that is all made here. Um, again, smaller uh, regional manufacturers tend to make products that meet the needs of builders in different climates. So you'll have things like geothermal or solar companies or other things um, focusing on specific needs in different regions of our country. So you can find a lot of regional manufacturing um, to support your product or support your, your project. Um, and also as in the appliance sector, smaller products such as like dehumidifiers, again, your window air conditioning units, these are all gonna be imported. Um, I think there's one remaining window air conditioning unit uh, manufacturer in North America in Mexico, and that's it, um, pretty much everything. Even if it, again, if it's owned by a large U.S. based company, they're still manufacturing uh, those products generally through a contract manufacturer and having them imported back here with their brand name on them. Um, they're not going to be made here. Um, insulation, we've, we've talked more about insulation, I think, than anything else at this point, but um, again, health, uh, key health certifications, uh, Creo, Creo, Green Guard, um, all those other ones. Uh, pretty easy to find here made in the U.S. I mentioned, again, there's a lot of um, local, even regional manufacturing of insulation. Um, and, you know, we we tend to put out there that fiberglass and cellulose are two of the healthier choices, um, uh, at least in some of, some of the manufacturers that we've worked with, like Owens Owen Corning. Um, you know, they don't have any uh, formaldehyde binders in their mineral wool and their fiberglass. Um, so those are, you know, those just tend to be some of the things we recommend because of the fact that it doesn't have a, the same chemical profile as some of the other uh, products that are, have red list chemicals in them. Um, product sector lighting, um, again, no key health certifications. This is one that can be a little bit more moderate to difficult to actually find U.S. made products. Um, you know, bulbs tend to be foreign made, but some fixtures are still made in the U.S. Uh, they tend to be higher end custom type things or uh, things associated with the solid state commercial lighting products. Um, a lot of your regular household stuff, it's just, uh, you know, especially things sold through big box stores um, are almost exclusively foreign made. Um, in addition to lighting, you know, not just the, you know, where it's made, but you can prevent, um, you know, and there's no, as I mentioned, there's no key health certifications, but you can prevent the risk of exposure to mercury in the home and the environment by focusing on buying LEDs versus CFOs, which actually contain mercury and are not as energy efficient. Paints and wall coverings. Um, again, has multiple key health certifications. Uh, pretty easy to find made here in the U.S. Um, you know, there's good choices on paint wall coverings. Um, you know, wanting to look for low or no VOC and or phthalate free. Um, you know, anything that we've re researched has been pretty cost comparable. I mean, most of your major paint manufacturers in the U.S. are making healthier paints. Um, even to the extent that, that, you know, they're looking at the dyes and other things that are going into it, you know, for no VOC, um, making sure that, you know, that there are healthy options and that they are widely available. Um, an example of something that we recently found was a, a paint for an organization we're working with in upstate New York, which is actually um, manufactured locally in Jonestown, New York, which was 
quite surprising um, that we actually found an in-state paint manufacturer. But again, that's the, the help that the Building Clean database provided was being able to show on that map um, where these things are being made, and then we were able to make that recommendation. Plumbing products, um, no key health certifications. Uh, again, more moderate to difficult to find um, made in the US. Um, there's still a significant amount of manufacturing going on of plumbing products, including toilets, which have actually been insourced um, a lot more. Uh, they used to be made more overseas, but there's more toilet manufacturing going on in the US now than before. However, um, things, you know, to take an example like Delta, uh, they make uh, certain products here in the U.S. that are made for your big box stores, which aren't, excuse me, which aren't made in the U.S., whereas uh, some of your, you know, independent contractors or distributors are getting uh, some of their made in the U.S. products. So there is a slight price difference in some of those products. Um, stuff at the big box stores is going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, but you're getting, uh, with the U.S. products, potentially a, a better warranty, uh, better quality. Um, and, you know, from what I understand, the, when we've directed folks to those products, the builders are more satisfied um, with the, the stuff that they're getting from the contractors and distributors that are the made in U.S. products. So, again, it's possible to find them, but you have to have a little bit of due diligence in confirming um, which product is, is a U.S. one versus foreign made one. Um, and I, sometimes it's just as simple as I mentioned here is looking on the box to confirm the country of origin um, or any of the Buy America compliance information, um, which is a, a program that has helped uh, really try to focus on, you know, bringing more production to the U.S. So Buy America, it might not be 100% American made, but it's going to have American content and American assembly in it at least. Uh, joint sealants, um, key, again, something with key health certifications. It's quite easy to find made in the U.S. Uh, there's multiple manufacturing facilities all over the country. Um, and just a quick note, you know, caulk, while technically not a joint sealant, is the safest material to use. Windows, doors, and skylights. Uh, there are some key health certifications associated with them. This is um, actually, probably one of the easiest products uh, to buy locally. There are so many uh, local uh, windows, doors, and skylights manufacturers, um, and it, again, they're all included in the database. But it's something that, um, as I've talked to organizations, you know, they, it hasn't been the easiest thing for them to look into. It's, it's you know, the builders and the folks they've worked with have tended to go right to. Um, some of the major, the major brands, Geldwin, um, you know, Anderson, things like that. And, and some of it I, I have to do with familiarity with working with certain products. But um, if there's an opportunity to uh, find a local product, this is probably one of the easiest ways to, to, to find that. You're going to find window doors and skylight manufacturers um, pretty much anywhere, um, you know, within 100 miles of where you're, you're building your project. Um, and although, you know, replacement costs for windows can add up, you know, it's a key sector, uh, key component in making building envelope tight for both energy savings and not only a healthier, but a more comfortable living space. Um, and just a little bit of, uh, just some results of, I was mentioning, you know, the paint uh, that we found, but there's some other just sort of products that we we're able to find and doing research with some uh, nonprofits we worked with around the country who are building projects. Um, you know, not everything when we've made these investments or made, made these choices has meant um, you know, that it's necessarily more expensive. Something that is more energy efficient or, or healthier does not mean it's more expensive. So here's some examples of that that we just wanted to share. Um, you know, some luxury vinyl plank flooring. Um, you know, we found a U.S. made phthalate free free product for 60 cents less per square foot than the other foreign made um, non-health certified product that the, the builder was using before. Um, interestingly enough, a washer dryer combo unit, uh, you know, we were able to find, and this is something these are actually pretty much exclusively made overseas, and we were able to find one made um, in the Bronx in New York, which actually saved uh, $250 per unit this in-state manufactured product. And that was actually quite a surprise um, we were at, that we actually came up with that. I, I, didn't, I didn't think we were going to be able to find one, but we, we did. 
Um, interior paint, I mentioned, you know, found the cradle to cradle certified red list free paint that was made in New York for $28 a gallon, um, which was comparably priced to the regular non health certified uh, product that they were using before. Um, and then asphalt shingles uh, use energy star certified shingles. Um, that were a less a dollar less per bundle than what they were using before. Um, so, you know, again, some opportunities, you know, we had to sort of you know, get into the weeds and some of these products and do some research. And but once we were able to uh, find some some quality products and make the switch, we feel like uh, we weren't compromising at all. We were actually gaining. We were finding the better product for the better price and didn't have to sacrifice anything. And that is it. Um, I would I'd love to answer questions. Um, I know it's kind of tough to go through a live database um, and uh, without being able to look at it <laughs> and go through some of the tools directly, but um, hopefully I've been able to provide a bit of a background for folks um, on, you know, building clean, what we're trying to accomplish here, and just the, the wealth of the information that we've put into this database. Um, and as someone who's had to work on various projects using it, um, I would say it's, it's a great tool. It's been helpful for us making really good recommendations for folks um, and really help just, you know, build the picture that there are so many opportunities to buy things made here in the U.S. And on top of it, um, you know, the uniqueness of our database is, you know, being able to layer that with the, with the health and the chemical information. So again, we're not only looking at buying US, we're looking at buying healthy, um, and we're looking at improving the overall quality of life and economy for those people and those projects that you're working on, and hope this is something that could be of use as, uh, you know, if this becomes more of an issue for folks, and obviously as more people seek certifications for their buildings, um, we see this tool growing and we hope to work to constantly improve it and make it useful for those in the building community. Um, so I'll leave it there. And if uh, there's questions or, or Brett, you had questions for me, I'll, we'll, I can take them. All right, great. Yeah, thanks, Dana. We got uh, plenty of time for questions here and questions are rolling in. Uh, put, put them in the chat box there. And as those questions are rolling in, uh, uh, big thanks um, to all of our uh, members, our volunteers, our board of directors, all of you for attending, and a huge thanks uh, to our top tier sponsors, uh, Shrenergy, for both on the go, in nature, or in your house or office, uh, backup microgrid solar powered solutions for not if, but when the grid goes down, uh, T-Stud, the world's most energy efficient wall stud assembly, insulated studs um, for all applications. And um, Mitsubishi um, Comfort, uh, you know, taking your next project to all electric, uh, net zero, um, with effective and affordable uh, heat pump systems. Um, so big thanks to them and all of our sponsors. Uh, so yeah, some questions are coming in, uh, I guess, I was just wondering, um, you know, how is your database uh, updated to ensure uh, it's accurate, that there's new stuff, old stuff's being removed? If people see something inaccurate, is there a quick way to flag it? Um, how does that work? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it's something that, you know, as a... <clears throat> Hello? Can you hear me? Yep, that we can oh, hear you. There you go. Okay. I'm sorry, I got muted out there for one second. Um, that's a great question. It's something that is a constant uh, work in progress. I mean, there's it's getting updated to the point where if I personally find something that that I'm researching and it needs to be fixed, um, I I send suggestions or other recommendations or other fixes in to our research department. Um, but we do go through a process where we sort of uh, you know, reassess and look at the companies that are in there, um, do sort of like on a yearly process. Um, we have a research team who has all of that, that, that data and we'll go through and compare it to, let's say, what um, Energy Star is putting on in terms of uh, products or building or companies that they're including in their database. 
Um, we're constantly adding. Um, I mentioned, um, you know, we we have several thousand products in there. We only we we only started with about two thousand, so that's the product uh, listings and the company listings have doubled since uh, we first built this database. So um, it's uh, I would say. Yes, it's something we're always looking at. It's, some, it's, a, it's a constant work in progress, you know, in terms of expansion and cleanup. But we do have, um, you know, our, our staff and users like myself who are um, always uh, looking to update or upgrade the information. And um, yes, anybody who ever finds anything wrong or incorrect on it should feel free to contact us as we want to up, update that as soon as possible. All right, great. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, if somebody's trying to create like a uh, a spec book or um, you know save what they've been specking, is it set up? I guess so. It's kind of two questions, but is it set up so that you know if they make their selection of choices, it sort of prints out into like a spec book that they can then take to elaborate on for their project? And then second, you know, can they save what they're usually using um, in the system? Yes, that's it. You know, that's it's actually it's funny that you asked that, Brett, because um, we did have it set up that way where you could save your searches. Um, I know that that was taken down for a bit for some reason. I I should double check to make sure that that still is is in effect. I, we was a tool that we had on there that you could actually print it out um, and have and be able to save your searches. I believe it's still active, but I don't want to say yes and then have it not be active. So. Um, my 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 thing is going to be yes, but uh, with a question mark at the moment. Um, I, I'm sorry. I, I I know that we did have that, and um, I just haven't I haven't checked on it a bit, and don't want to say yes or no at the moment. But it was that way in the past. Yeah. Okay. Um. So for Windows, obviously, um, you know, everybody thinks you need to buy the latest and greatest Windows to make them energy efficient. But we know in older existing buildings. Um, they can easily be repaired and puttied, and also you can just toss some like nice low E storms on them. Um, do you have uh, anything in there, at least for storm windows or window repair materials? Um, I mean, I would think uh, the repair materials we're going to have, you know, would just be in like the sealant sections and things, um, but. Uh, not maybe not to the extent that you're talking about specifically. Um, you're just going to find your your main window manufacturers, um, and if there are you know fix it or sealants or other things that they're selling independently through them, you'd probably have to talk to that manufacturer. But um, no, I, I don't think that if I'm understanding your question question correctly. Uh, so, so that was half of it. Yeah. The other question was, is it only conventional windows or do you list storms on there? Yes. The storms are in there as well. Great. Um, any uh, look to um, specking products to kind of, you know, like, you know, buildings that are trying to go to the next level, like uh, to hit all electric or net zero? Uh, is there any plan to sort of differentiate and what products help people get there? Um, yes, we've been talking actually about how we can continue to make this a useful tool for those, um, like again, looking into LEED or Enterprise Green, you know, you have certain types of flow rates on faucets or other specifics like you're talking about to help you get there. And I think the more that we get involved with uh, working with some of the nonprofits and others, that are going towards net zero, uh, we want to you know, be able to differentiate some of that stuff better in the website. Um, you know, right now you can basically find um, any manufacturer that we've included in the database is going to be making energy efficient products. But basically what it's gonna do is then take you directly to that manufacturer where, where then you'll you're sort of you know, double specify what you need. Um, so if it's something with a certain efficiency rating, um, you'll do that directly through the manufacturer's website um, versus on ours. Although I would, uh, you know, we've talked about and I would love to see, um, you know, more more specifics like that. So you could say this this product right here will help you qualify for this particular certification. I think, um, you know, that's something that we look to get into down the road. But at least it can help you get to 
um, a U.S. manufacturer and get you to someone who's making the type of product that you want. And then again, once you get to that manufacturer, um, you'll sort of specifically specify from there what kind of, you know, the, the rating, you know, energy rate, you know, the efficiency rating of a particular product you'll do through the manufacturer website versus ours. Uh, so, yeah, on that note, I mean, I know um, Enterprise and LEED uh, do not certify products. A lot of people think, you know, LEED certifies products, um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there, but they certainly do not. Um, but uh, Passive House and the National Green Building Standard actually do certify projects, products. So do you have um, a way to sort through through their certifications as well? Um, not specifically, no. I think, you know, when we've been working on the certifications, we, you know, look to, you know, look to the list of certifications and then um, find the products that meet them. So we don't have anybody's specific, um, you know, recommendations or, or certifications listed in our database. I mean, you kind of have to start with, um, you know, what, like I said, with Enterprise Green and then sort of backtrack from there and do the research. Um, but we can help you get to that manufacturer and, and find that manufacturer that is, is close to your work workplace as, or your building site as possible. Hmm, got it. Um, well, uh, we're coming up on our time and I don't see any other questions here, uh, Dana, so I really appreciate your time. And then just real quick, if people wanted to get more information or I think you had offered earlier if somebody wanted some kind of one-on-one -on -one help running through the database, where can they contact you or find more information? Sure. Um, you can contact me directly at my email address. It's Dana, P, D-A-N-A-P, at Blue Green Foundation, or excuse me, BGA Foundation.org. Mm -hmm. I have multiple email addresses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> DanaP@BGAFoundation.org, and I would love to do some one-on-one -on -one with people. It, it can be a little challenging. Again, it's a lot yeah. easier to go through the breadth of the site when you're doing it live, but it's yeah. also hard to show it live on a, yeah. <laughs> on a in an event like this. Uh, but hopefully, this provided some background for folks that um, at least provides a starting point. And, and again, happy to answer any questions or yeah. go through things in more specifics if anyone needs help. All right, uh, Dana, well, I appreciate your time. Um, I appreciate the Blue Green Alliance for um, coming on out and everybody have a great rest of your week. Take care. Great, thank you, Brett.